Tonight, we start off with new information about the transgender woman found murdered in Northwest Baltimore. Oh, 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 Transphobia's got to go! This homicide marks the second unsolved killing of a transgender woman over the last six weeks in the city. I will not disappear. Mm -hmm. I will not be a statistic. Today, it was day one of the trial of a teenager accused of shooting and robbing a transgender woman back in April. As I was still lying on the ground, he walked around me, and he pointed the gun, and then he shot me. Island Nettles was assaulted last week on a New York City street. She died in the hospital five days after the attack. So all my trans women, we got to stand up for each other. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Right Media has always contributed in the genocide of girls like us. They tried to lose us, persecute us for speaking out. There are a lot of amazing things in our lives that you don't ever get to hear. To hear, to hear. I will not be silenced by my black transgender experience. I am here, here. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. What comes to your mind when I say body of terrorism? Silicon Oh, baby. What's your name? Toya. And what does body terrorism mean to you? Bing that chair. Down. So it was nice. I just want to breathe sometimes. It's like I'm paralyzed. And no one seems to acknowledge my trauma. Because no one wants to acknowledge me. What do I do? in a world that closes itself from possibilities. And yet, I'm always here. My name is Eris. I'm a 23-year-old transgender woman. Well, um, I'm basically a very lovable person. I have a great personality. I'm funny. I'm edgy. I'm just all around bubbly. I'm, I love history. Um, I love playing video games and I'm a good sport, you know. When I was applying for school, it was um, hard for me because I wasn't really focused. I was more focused on my transition and I wanted to get everything done. So I was like, school is not really for me in a sense. And that, what is the reason I further my education when I can't get a job? And I felt that it's just pointless because of the loss of hours and countless days that I've been trying to get interviews and interviews and I always get rejected. And I'm thinking to myself, if I get a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, what's the difference? If I don't look the part of how society views trans people as they have to look like women to work there or be embarrassment to their company. So I just kind of, you know, rejected that and ignored, ignored it for a while. That this not the end where you can actually apply yourself and go to school. And fuck what, you know, people say because you're transgender, they look at you. You know, you make that statement. That is what I want to do and that's what made me think about it. And I was like, you know what, I want to go back to school. I want to make that change. Because if I make that change, then other girls can see that and, and apply themselves and do the same thing. You know, so that's the reason why. You know, people discriminate against me because I'm trans, because I'm black as well, and I'm a woman. So there's three odds against me that's really, really strong and it's not helped me at any point to get a job. You know, they don't even look at my credentials, they actually just look at me and just judge me and I don't get the job because of that majority of the time. I'll be going to school in the fall semester of 2015. I want to sustain myself and live my life the way I want to instead of, you know, asking people for money and feeling vulnerable 
you know, just live in a normal life. Just because I'm trans, I do not have a limit. I actually have a story and I actually have a life. Nothing's not gonna stop me or no person around the world's gonna stop me. And plus the support of my sisters is what keeps me going in life as well. It's having that foundation that I yearn for when my parents, you know, took me off. How I get myself ready is to Put, my, put an image in, in my head knowing that I am my self-worth, my um, who I am as a person, how strong I am, and nothing is going to take me down. And that is really what I always prepare myself when I go on the train, when I go walk in the street. I have that image in my head that I am a strong, self-worthy person. And just like anybody else, deserve rights as anybody else in the world. It, it's... Is a big pop when I go on the train. Usually I try to pay it in a sense, but it's always people trying it, trying to wonder if I'm a boy or a girl, or like, you know, if a, if a guy hits on me and he gets closer, then he finds out that I'm trans. Then because of the, you know, the environment he's in, he's gonna have to play it off, act like he doesn't like me, and, and socially embarrass me or call me a man. You know, you know I do get that on the train, and I get, you know, mostly from black females that I get the hate and the, 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 the jealousy of them, you know, just not like me because I'm trans. I have a white transgender girlfriend, my sister, that I love very deeply, but she does not get the same issues in a sense when it comes to black women. Let me get it. Oh, 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 oh. This a breast, three wings, and a chicken tail. And a biscuit? All right, you know, you know me, and I will be back. trans woman of color breaks a mold in society and make it a better place for everybody to live in. Even in Brooklyn, as a black trans woman, it's just like being Cinderella. You are subjected and forced to live in someone else's reality. My name is Olympia. I'm currently working on Black Trans Media. I'm the content director there. And aside from that, I'm an artist, I'm a poet, I'm working I'm getting some of my poetry published. Inductees. It was silly old me, not realizing pain is free. Masked by greatness, overshadowed by love. No wonder why we walk around like we got it all. And shifting and reframing the way media views us. You know, it's bigger than just me. It's bigger than just you. This is us. This is all of us. I grew up in Puerto Rico partially. Um, before that, I was born in Maryland. And then after Puerto Rico, we came here to Brooklyn. Hmm. Growing up black and trans in Bedstad was a difficult task. It was going against authorities, it was going against my family, it was going against my community. It was literally fighting against the world waking up and having to explain to the world why you want to be happy and like what we as a collective and the people that care about me what are the next steps or what are the steps we can take in contributing to my happiness having been forced to become a really really good fighter only to feel safe while I'm walking to school when I'm walking to the train um, I've had plenty of fights in Brooklyn because I was trans and people didn't understand that and people couldn't grasp the idea of living in your truth. That was something that I remember is like so much police activity, so much police walking up and down the block asking you 
what are you doing here? Do you live here? It's always an argument. It's always someone explaining something to them. And if you're not explaining, they're harassing you. And if you're calling for help, they are justifying why they came 35 minutes late. I started getting involved in school activities, even when school was difficult too, and maneuvering and having to go through high school in Brooklyn and while trans, and even having school officials tell me not to present the way that I was presenting and to accept what they believed to be my manhood, which was my womanhood. Laws make us perfect, but we reject it and see I turned it. Credentials don't match what most say, but we believe it anyway. Why? Because it's spoken. My mom becoming really involved and not really being too pleased with the involvement and the level of engagement that she had to give because of me and that frustrating her and that leading her to eventually leave. She couldn't take that. It was all too much for her and my family, which was difficult at the time. And, you know, I was presented a really difficult um, reality, which I, which I had to forcefully accept and navigate through that. In which I did. I graduated high school um, while I was homeless and I became homeless because I was trans. My family wasn't really ready to accept that and they didn't want to walk with that. It was a process for me to look at her and say, Ma, I still love you through it all. And I realized that the journey, even though it wasn't the slickest, the jaggedness gave me a different perspective about life and the beauty in every step. I recently reconnected with my mom and celebrated my birthday and the announcement of my engagement. She shared with me and my husband that she is more than ever interested in mending our relationship. Now, I am in an abundance of love, black trans love, because trans lives matter. And I wanna say that we should continue to support black trans folks and we should continue to see the light in our voice and not be diminished and not feel like we have to diminish that voice because what others are saying around us. And as trans people, we have a, vo a voice and we should not let our transgender experience silence the violence that is placed on our black trans bodies every day. Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life? I had no model. Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman, what did I see to be except myself? I made it up here on this bridge between starshine and clay, my one hand holding tight my other hand. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed.